All right, welcome. So today we're gonna to take a look at the tool called Vanishing Point. So if you've ever wanted to put something in perspective inside of Adobe Photoshop, uh, yeah, it can be difficult. There is a perspective crop, but that's really not what we wanna use. So we're gonna take a look at how to use Vanishing Point and you really need to follow these steps because it's not made to be non-destructive. You can't use a smart filter to kind of go back in and edit it. It's something I wish Adobe would really change. That would be wonderful. But today I'm gonna to show you how to put type images or really thing in perspective inside of an image. So if you take a look here, I've got this living room scene and let's say you had an image in your client wanting to know what their picture would look like above their couch. So this is our fake picture. I've already gone ahead and sized it, selected it, and copied it. So to select and copy, it's really easy. You're gonna do Command or Control A, which is select all, and Command or Control C, which is copy. And then we go back to that image, which is right here and I can hit Command V and that will simply paste that in and I can move it. And so, yeah, it's in the image, but it looks stupid because it's on a completely different plane. It's not following the angle of that wall. So let's go ahead and get out of that. So we'll just go ahead and redo that black and white. And this time we're gonna paste that image in perspective so that we can see more of what it's gonna look like. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that 1500 pixel image that I've copied and that's one of the tricks. Whenever you use Vanishing Point, you need to copy the image or text first before you go into Vanishing Point because there's no way to get it. So in this case, in this case, I'm gonna create what we call Stamped Visible, and that's Command Option Shift E on a Mac, and that just makes a duplicate of this. You could use Command J, you could duplicate your file, um, because it's non-destructive, once you do it, it's there. So this is the only way to make it easily removable is to create a duplicate of this down here. So once we've got that, we're gonna come on up here to the filter and we're gonna drop down here to what we call vanishing point. And so vanishing point is gonna let us create that perspective that we see in this image. And so right here, we have this little create clean tool. And that's where we're gonna be able to create this plane. And we simply do this by clicking a point. So left click, a point, drag over to here, left click this point. And I'm gonna actually go all the way down this wall until I get to this line on the floor. With my glasses on, I can't see real well, but I think I got it. And we'll go over. I am gonna to try to keep this line level. So we're just gonna come out to here and I'm gonna go ahead and click this. And it's blue, if it's yellow or red, it, the computer doesn't think that you're in perspective. So if you were to drag this and you can see now it turns yellow, it's like, hey, I don't think you're in perspective. So we wanna get that so it's blue and we will slide this over. And then once I've got that, I can simply just go ahead and drag that to extend that plane out. So you need to have this kind of blue grid anywhere you wanna put something. So now that we have that image, we're gonna paste it in, which is Command or Control V is in paste, and we'll go ahead and put that in. And we simply just drag that in. And so we're dragging that into this blue line. Now you can see it's changed the shape of that image. And now it looks like it's inside or on that wall in perspective. I can now simply hit OK, and voila, we've put that image in there. We can add this if we're doing a room and we think it needed art and that was an option. Obviously, this is just a flat dimensional picture. It's not three dimensional or frame picture. So if I wanted to add a little more dimension, I could take a frame picture and take a picture of and add that into the image. But you get the gist. We're adding that in perspective to the photo. Now, you don't have to just add photo in perspective, and you can do it on two completely different planes. So let's go to this little green thing over here. And what I'm gonna do is first create Command J or Control J, that's just gonna simply duplicate that layer. And then in this layer, what I'm gonna do is put some type. So we're gonna come in here and 
then we're going to put planes. All right. So I'm going to hit command A to select all. I'm going to make that much bigger. And that looks pretty good. And we'll bring this in. Now, because this doesn't support smart objects and it's non destructive, I need to actually copy the planes letter like it was an image. So I'm going to hold the command key or control key on a PC and click in this little text box. And that's going to make a selection of the letters. Now I'm just going to go ahead once again and hit command C, which is copy. We need that selection of the letters. And then I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off and select the copied layer. So you can see I still have it selected on the computer. Command D will deselect that. And now we're going to go into vanishing point. We're going to do something a little more complicated. So we're going to go in up here, vanishing point. And let me make this bigger so you guys can see what I'm doing. Get that same plane tool that we had before. And I'm going to go click. And this is really easy. The reason I selected this cube is so you can see what I'm doing, not because I think it's interesting. And we'll come down here and boom. And then we'll go up to here. We created that plane. All right. Now, in this case, I want the words to go not only on this plane, but across this plane. So we want it to go whoop. Okay, so I'm going to hit the command key on a Mac and I'm going to drag and now the computer is going to try to apply that same plane over here and it looks like it is pretty accurate. If I needed to adjust it, I could just go ahead and grab one of these points and slide that around. But this looks pretty good. So once again, we can click in that and I'm going to hit command V to paste planes. I'm going to drag that into word here. You can see just like that, we've got plane wrapping around this cube. So if you need to change the size of something, since this is an image, we're going to use transform. So command or control T will let us get the transform function. I'm going to hold shift and option. All right. And that's going to let me change the size of this uh, in proportion. I'm just sliding that and then I can just let go and then slide this back this way. Now I've made it smaller and I can hit return to apply that. And voila, we have that in perspective. Now I could do that with the photo as well. Why you would do that, I'm not really sure. But if that's something you wanted to do, you could easily do that with an image as well. So let's go on over to this image here. And one of the things that people don't think about is we can actually use the rubber stamp. And so we can kind of copy and paste something inside of an image in perspective. So once again, how do we do that? Well, in this case, we don't need to copy or paste anything beforehand. We're just going to go up here to filter and go to vanishing point. And just like we did before, we need to create that grid of where we're going to put something. And so in this case, I'm going to use this area right here. So I'm going to have that grid tool here and I'm going to come here, click a point here, click a point here, click a point here and click a point. So now we've got this grid inside of here. And if you notice, we've got the rubber stamp tool. So I can come up here and grab the rubber stamp tool. Now this is a little funky because I can't really see my rubber stamp. So I need to just test it out. So I'm going to hold that either alt or option key and I'm going to click to create a source point. And then you can see I can go over here and do this. Now it looks a little bit too big. So I'm going to hit command Z to undo that. So I'm going to come back over and basically what I want to do is kind of clone this over here. So I'm going to go ahead and hold that option again. I'm going to click there and I'm going to come over here. You can see the area is pretty large that I have. And this is normally a circle, but it's warping it because it's in perspective. So I don't like that. So I'm just going to get out of it. And then we're going to go back to this and I'm going to make my stamp smaller. Okay. And I'm going to redo it again. So I'm going to hold alt or option and click that. And we can just simply paste that in and you can see it applied that image right there in that location. Okay. If I don't like it, I can hit command Z and undo it and do it again. And I'm just kind of clicking and dragging around until I get the whole image. 
it is cloning some of this other area. So you need to pay attention when you're doing it that you don't put it in like another spot that it's not gonna look normal in. So in this case, I'm gonna hit command on this one here. I'm gonna hit option and we'll come over here and I'll put this in. You can see it's got these bright red bricks. So it looks sort of odd. Is it putting it in perspective? Yes, all right, but it's not that helpful. Um, you can use also use this to take things out of an image. So let's say I didn't want this little thingamajigger right here. So I can come over here to the bricks that I want, hold the Alt or Option, that's my source, and then I can just kind of paint that in. And just like that, it disappears. Now this has heal on, I'm gonna heal off. So if you do it over here on this one, heal helps it try to blend in. If I use just the rubber stamp, it's gonna literally use the same exact source code and it might not look so well. So what I'll do is I'll come up here to where it's sort of faint and I'll, I'll grab some of this area. And if I put it down there, notice it's staying kind of that pale color. Now, if I change this and put the heel on, it will try to blend that in a little bit better. Is it perfect? No, but heel seems to work better when you're trying to kind of copy and paste. So in this case, we're using that planar perspective to kind of copy and paste using the rubber stamp stuff in our image. And this actually be kind of helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel because I'm not gonna save that. So to demonstrate once again in an image, let's say I wanted to take something in or out of this photo. And we're gonna come over here and be smart this time and hit Command J to duplicate our layer. And to prove this, if you go to Filter and Smart Filters, hit OK. So now it's a, a smart object, but if we go into Filter, notice Vanishing Point here is it's not available anymore. So you can't use smart objects. Boy, do I wish we could use smart objects. All right, so we're gonna go down here, go to Vanishing Point. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and create that perspective on this. I'm just gonna use this area right here to create. So we're gonna go point, point. I don't think this whole image is exactly the same. So we'll go here, point, and we're gonna follow that line. That looks pretty good. So now we can just go ahead and extend that if we need to. So we'll extend this down. We can extend this over. Remember, if you wanted to warp it down here, we can hold that command key and we can pull it down this way. So we get both sides. A little off over here, so we can go up a little and fix that. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we can grab that rubber stamp tool and just like before, if I didn't want this window or I don't want this window, I can simply come over here, click in the gray space and just kind of apply that out. I have to do this a couple times to get things that we need and voila, just like that, that window's gone. Now, if I wanted to put the, uh, a window over here, not really gonna work. And, and the reason is because this window's dark. So I'm gonna click here and then paint this window over here. So you can see, yeah, the perspective's different, but the, the wall's kind of dark. The heel tries to blend it, but it doesn't work so good. But if I take that window and put it right here, so if I come here and go click for there, and then I try to apply this, that looks pretty good, right? That puts it in perspective. It matches because the values are basically the same. So that's how you use Vanishing Point inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you found this video helpful and could give us a thumbs up, that would be great. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe.